All right, Fishaholic fam, well, welcome back to another episode, or welcome to the channel, and also welcome back to Panama. If you've been following along with the uh, Los Buzos Resort Panama episodes, or just welcome to this beautiful country if you're a you know, first time tuning in. And this is our final day here at Los Buzos. It's Friday, and I'll put all the other episodes from this Panama trip down in the description below or somewhere on the screen. And episode one was day one, episode two was day two, episode three was days three and four, and then episode four is gonna be our fifth day today. And uh, we basically fished in the kayaks all week, but today we're gonna switch things up so we can cover a lot more water and hit a lot more spots. And we're just gonna hop in the pangas and fish strictly in that for the entire day. So I'm excited. And we might even head back to St. Patricio Park where we were yesterday. And it was, and it started out a little bit tough out there, but towards the end, I got on a nice yellowfin tuna bite and with poppers, so you can't beat that. And now we're just gonna get out there and fish our hearts out. I'm gonna go down down to the breakfast hall, grab a bite quick, and then uh, we're gonna head out there. And after hopefully a successful fishing day, we're gonna come back and then have a really nice barbecue hosted by Luz Buzos. And I believe uh, we're even going to uh, be eating one of uh, the pigs that they've raised here and we're gonna harvest one for this barbecue and, and so we're gonna have some fresh pork and we're also gonna have some fresh fish and we basically have, have had fresh fish every single day this week so uh, we're filled up on fresh tuna snapper uh, Sierra mackerel uh, African pompano because one of the guys caught one yesterday as well so there's definitely no shortage of ocean to table but also Los Buzos is big on farm to table. So a lot of the vegetables that we've been, eat, been eating all week also are grown here. And also I guess some of the meat as well is raised here. So it's pretty cool. They're totally functional all on their own really living up here in the mountains and along the beach. But anyway, I'm gonna quit talking, go grab a bite and I will see you guys out on the pangas. Let's go catch some fish. We're here. So what are we primarily jigging for right now? Grouper? Okay. Oh, oh there's a good fish. Nice. This fish crushed that Daiwa jig on the way up. This isn't a grouper or a snapper, I don't think. Yeah, I can see it being an Almaco or just a Jack Creval, maybe. Yep, Jack Creval. All right, not bad. Better than nothing to start off the day. First fishing boat. Yeah, you gotta get the skunk out of the way somehow. See ya. Got him? In the rock? Hmm. Whoa! 
Jim's fighting a big fish that hit a live bait on the bottom. Ooh. Oh, look, <laughs> look at him he's rip that line. Up yet. No, he's not done yet. Gone, Big rooster. Nice. So after releasing that rooster fish, we all fished in the same area for another 30 minutes. But since we had no more luck, we made a move out into deeper water. All right, guys, we're here. I'm gonna try dropping down this 150 gram Uncle Ben's tackle jig. Let's drop it down. We're in uh, 400 feet of water right now. There's a the fish on the drop. And it's a long way up, 400 feet now, here we go. Hey, look at that, a little grouper. Whew. Sweet. He's got a serious case of the bends right there. Look at how his eyes are popping out. <laughs> but this is gonna be delicious. And we got him with this hook here that has some of this um, little glow hair on it. So maybe he saw that side of the jig a little bit better and that's why we got him there. Right in the box. <laughs> yeah, I know. What species of grouper is this? Gray grouper. Thank you, Jim. All right, let's get back down there with this 150 gram Uncle Vin's tackle jig. And by the way, if you want to check the link in the description, you can click it and uh, save 10% off from their store. Oh, there's a fish. Something a little smaller, I think. Oh, look at this, a bonito. Yeah. These are really good eating. Look at that guys, a bonito. This guy hit it like right on the bottom surprisingly. Whoa, Jim. Throwing this guy in the box too? All right. You know it. There he is. All right, I just stopped recording and got nailed by something a little bigger here. Oh man. Oh. Yeah, this feels a little heavier than that last grouper. Oh yeah, look at that. It kind of feels like a tunoid now of some sort, like it might be another white tuna or bonito. I can feel its tail pulsating a lot. Wait a minute, wait a Who's... Oh. I'm at the surface right there. Oh boy.
There we go. Okay. All right, I'm out. Gracias. Look at that nice bone right there. Sweet. There's a fish. Real light bite. Maybe this will be a little tile fish. It doesn't feel like a white tuna or bonita. There we go. My first ever. Panama tile fish. Pretty cool. That's awesome. All right, we're gonna make another move. Jaden in the green shirt and Josue in the blue shirt, uh, man in the engine. Basically the two captains on board today uh, said that this is mostly like a gray grouper spot. So it's cool that I got that small one, but uh, the potential is here to you know catch a really big one. So maybe we'll come back here later, but we're gonna move a little bit further west, I guess. We're gonna go west a little bit. Yeah. And um, there's another spot where we can potentially have a shot, of, uh, a better shot at catching red grouper, which would be really cool. So see you there. I'm gonna make a jig switch. And I'm gonna try this jig right here. Yeah, you just got that just don't. Oh, there's something. <laughs> Look at the size of that thing. Corvina? Nice, okay. My first Pacific Corvina. Now that doesn't look like the Corvina. Look that car. Something good, huh? Yeah. Nice, Jaden. Oh, nice. There you go. Nice. <laughs> Look at that freaky looking thing. What is that? Gongria. I don't know how to say English. Gongria? Gongrio? It's like half grouper, half eel. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, as you can see, the wind is cranked up and we're getting surrounded by storms. We got a massive storm there to the east. Another real big storm coming off the mountains here uh, to the west another one offshore there and it looks like these storms might come together and it's probably going to get pretty snarky out here so we might do some trolling uh, the captains are saying and and i just have to really stick it out and we're kind of starting to batten down the hatches although there there isn't many hatches to batten down out here so we're gonna be you know be a little bit exposed and probably get soaked but it's part of the experience <laughs> and uh, hopefully these storms pass and then we can get back to some real hard fishing after so stay tuned i'm going to try and you know keep you guys up to date the best i can but i might have to put this camera away because i have the the gopro door off so this camera really isn't waterproof but i have my other cameras that are waterproof right now so we'll see what happens stay tuned <laughs> So unfortunately, this storm hit us really hard, and since it was towards the end of the trip, we headed back to shore, but I wasn't done fishing yet. All right, well, we're back here at Los Buzos on the beach, and we had to cut today's panga trip a little short because of that nasty storm, and we were hoping that it was gonna clear up on our way back, but it never did, so we basically kind of just packed it in. And it's a shame I did not get a Kubera today on my final day. But you know what that means? That just means I have to come back. And if that storm didn't hit, we were also gonna go to a spot specifically just for Kuberas, but 
Mother Nature had other plans for us. And after we got back, I was pretty much ready just to pack it in and go ahead for the shower, but I did fly the drone and I spotted some cool manta rays swimming around. And then I flew it down the beach a little bit further and I spotted what looked to be some nice Jack of all cruising around. So hopefully we could toss around some big poppers or big spooks and maybe get bit. So let's do it. Come on, fish. Come on, fish. Nice little rip going around this sandy point here. There's gotta be something right here, close in that might hit this. Oh. Oh, I just had a big fish on. It just came off right there in the wash. Let's try again. Hopefully we can get the next one. It looked like a pretty big bite too. Fish on. Not sure what I got here, but it's definitely nothing too big. I think a little smaller than what that first fish we had on was. No way! Look at that! I think that's an African pompano! <laughs> a small African pompano on the popper from the surf? Are you serious? <laughs> that is really cool. Alright guys, unfortunately these trebles got this fish pretty bad in the gills so he died real quickly so I'm gonna keep him and we'll keep plugging away for a little bit longer and see what else we can get hopefully whatever we get next will be a little bit bigger although that was still a really awesome catch that's only my second ever African Pompano I got a 24 pounder in the Gulf of Mexico on a uh, nomad vibe like 300 feet down so this is like the complete polar opposite <laughs> oh i'm getting hit getting hit again oh they're on me come on back come on back there he is oh i lost them I have some of the barbs crimped down on this popper, so that's probably why I'm losing them. All right, we got our African pompano, and we're gonna head back. And you know, it's funny, our three bites were pretty much within like 10, 15 minutes of each other. And then after that, it was just Skunksville. So I guess I just kind of fished out the spot. I, I'm sure there were more fish there that just looked at the popper or got spooked uh, as soon as I threw the popper out there, but I need a shower. That's uh, one thing I know about right now. And uh, I'm gonna get back, see if I can flay up the fish or if someone else uh, back at the resort wants it. And that's the great thing about Los Buzos is everyone that comes here loves fish or works here loves fish. So none of this goes to waste and Everyone I'm, I'm sure who works here has friends. So if they have excess fish, 
they share the love and they spread the fish around as well. And now I'm not really sure what time it is, but I know that dinner is at 7 p.m. And hopefully there's still enough time that I can get back, get cleaned up, and go check out the cool farm that's here at Los Buzos. And you know, if not, unfortunately, then I might just be running to the dining hall to grab some food. But yeah, I need a shower, I'm hungry. And once I lay down later, whew, I'm gonna pass right out. <laughs> I'm gonna fillet this guy up real quick. Such a cool fish. Nice looking fillets. Check out the little kitty here. Wants a little tidbit. Is that good? All right, AP's all filleted up. Now it's time for a shower. <laughs> all right, guys, a little update. The apps are starting to hit the table here. And Diani, this is uh, Morris's wife. Yeah. And what can you tell us in the spread that we got going on here? Yeah, here we have the sashimi. We have tuna, sierra, tuna. and congrio. Do you, can you point out which one is which? We know that's the tuna, the si tuna. Sierra. Mm -hmm. And this is the congrio. The congrio. Yeah. The congrio is what Jaden caught that looks like kind of like an eel slash grouper. This is and the spring rolls. Nice. Vegetables and a spring. That looks really good. And this is the fried ceviche. Ooh, nice. I don't think I've ever had fried ceviche. That looks delicioso. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Let's dig in. Alright guys, here we go. Let's try it out. That's a good plate right there. Yellow fin. Can't go wrong there. I believe this is the grouper that I caught today. Oh. I thought it was going to be a little bit more chewy, but that was great. And this is the weird looking eel slash grouper looking fish. Also phenomenal. Little piece of Sierra mackerel. Perfect. I really want to try the ceviche though. I've never had fried ceviche. You like it? Yeah. Oh yeah. I could eat that as my main course, that fried ceviche. But we gotta save room for the pig. <laughs> we got a lot of po fresh pork coming out. All right, we're back with a second plate already. A little sesame seared yellowfin tuna with a, a little bit of the secret 
Los Buzos sauce on there. Check that out. That looks really good. And I'm kind of getting worried because I'm starting to get stuffed up and the pig isn't even out yet. Oh. Notice I'm taking smaller portions now. <laughs> oh, it's so good. This tuna was just swimming yesterday. If you saw episode three, you know, you saw me get a, a few of them, which was cool. And I guess um, December, January, February is when the bigger tuna are caught around in this area. So hopefully I'll be back around that time. I'd love to get on some really big tuna in the kayak. I think that'd be so cool. All right, guys, the pig is now out on the table, but it's actually only two legs of the pig because um, there's only five or six of us here right now. Well, maybe 10 of us, but um, we don't need a whole pig to feed us all. But if, you're, if you come here with a, a larger group, then they'll have the whole pig cooked and laid out on the table. But I gotta run in place for a little bit or something to make some room for this delicious pork. Let's get to it. Tastes like. Did you try any of this though? Of course. Alright, guys. Round three. Ooh, this looks good. Oh, yeah. Check that out. That's the skin. Oh, that's good stuff. I'm definitely going to make some room for seconds. <laughs> so I'm eating a Spanish pig. All right, it's our final morning, and I just so happened to wake up, and it was super early. I found the ambition to get the day started, pack everything up, and I got the pop and stick here. We're gonna go out there for like an hour and a half and see if we can get another fish from the surf. So let's get it done. All right, so I'm walking down onto this sandy point, basically the same area where I got that African pompano yesterday. So I'm gonna hit this entire point and hope that there's some more hungry fish here. It'd be really cool just to get at least like one surf caught Jack Creval. And that was what I saw to be uh, most prevalent with the drone that was sitting in the surf zone here yesterday. Oh, I got something waking right behind my plug. I don't know what it is. It almost looked like a rooster. I think I saw the top dorsal and it looked like a rooster. No way. Oh yeah, rooster, rooster right behind the plug, right behind the plug. Oh my God. Come on, come on, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it. Oh man. So cool. That's like another lifetime goal of mine is to get a rooster from the surf. So it was really cool to at least see a rooster fish in the surf this morning. But unfortunately, after seeing that one fish, I casted for about an hour more without a touch. So I packed it up. Well, it's a shame we did not get that rooster that was really the only interested fish that I saw this morning. And I 
wasn't even really expecting to see that so that was pretty cool i mean you can catch them from the surf but i was just expecting to come out this morning and get a nice jack for ball if we were lucky enough but not even a single bite from them and i bet i bet the fish were there but maybe i just wasn't using the right plug and i kind of kept it simple for this morning and just stuck with one plug instead of playing around and wasting time i you know i had bites on it yesterday so i figured we would try it again today and it would work and you know maybe if we had a different plug on for the rooster it would have hit it or imagine if i had like a live mullet that i could have just pulled out right away and threw it in front of him he probably would have crushed that but anyway i'm gonna go get changed and uh, have the last breakfast here at los buzos uh, hopefully not the last though. I, I really would love to come back and bring some more of my own uh, equipment, uh, especially uh, some more of my own rods, like better rods for fishing the surf. Uh, because I believe this rod that I'm using is only like seven and a half, eight foot, and um, it, it got the job done. You know, we were launching plug out there pretty good, but with like a nine to like ten foot surf rod, we've been able to cover so much more water. And also a big thanks to everyone working behind the scenes to help make this trip possible. All the captains, the mates, uh, the cooks, and a huge shout out to Morris and his wife, uh, Biani. And uh, they definitely made me feel right at home here. And it was just an awesome experience. And finally, thanks to each and every one of you that came to pa Panama with me. And I hope you guys enjoyed this little series. And uh, I guess, You'll see me next back in Florida. I'm hoping I'll be able to make a couple more videos there. I'll be there for like a week and then I fly to Brazil for two weeks. So that'll be pretty cool. Uh, I have plans to go to the Pantanal and do some fishing for hopefully Dorado and then whatever else is there that wants to bite. But I really want to scratch off the Dorado just like for this trip that I really had the goal to come here and catch a rooster fish. But anyway, I'll catch you next time. And like always, live to fish fish to live.